name is Mike. Um, I'm from Massachusetts, about 45 minutes uh, south of Boston, just a little town. And I've been saved now for about four years. Um, it's been a long time, and I've been in Bible college for most of that time. Um, this is my fourth year in Bible college. I'll be graduating in, in uh, May, actually. Exactly. So I praise God for that. Yes, and, um, you know, I was raised in church a little bit, you know, in the Baptist church. That was the background that I had. Uh, my parents split up when I was young, and, and uh, there, was, there was a worldly marriage. And my dad ended up, you know, going, uh, he got saved, and he joined the Baptist church. And he did that for a while, so I would go to his church on the weekends and stuff when I would see him. But when I hit high school, you know, I was done with that. You know, I didn't really see him much anymore. Didn't have anything to do with church. Started partying, you know, and I uh, just dove, dovetailed down quick. Uh, you know, started smoking pot when I was maybe 15. And uh, by the time I was 16, I was using heroin and cocaine. So it didn't take long, you know, for that stuff to really grab a hold of me big time. And so about five years... You know, I, I was on, in and out of that lifestyle, rehab, detox, you know, the whole nine. Let, dropped out of high school my senior year. Um, you know, I ended up getting my GED. And then when I was 21, uh, just to make a long story short so we can get into the word tonight. When I was 21, uh, I wasn't living at home at the time. I was living that lifestyle. And uh, I was ended up having everything I owned in the back of my car. I called up my dad. You know, I needed a place to stay. And I said, can I move in with you? And uh, he said, that's fine. You just have to come to church on Sunday. And that was his only requirement. He said, you don't even have to pay rent. So I said, all right, sounds good to me, man. I just need a place to stay. So I, I, came, I came and went and lived with my dad. And in the meantime, uh, he had actually been filled with the Spirit and opened up his own church. So when he said, I want you to come to church, he wasn't inviting me to the Baptist church that he used to go to. He was inviting me to a new Spirit-filled church that he had planted by the leading of the Lord. So within a month of me living with him and going to church, I was born again in spirit. Hallelujah. And uh, set me free from, you know, drugs and alcohol and immorality and all that nasty stuff. And um, started watching SBN pretty much immediately after I got saved. Saw the commercial for the Bible College. And uh, it just stuck with me. And I knew that was the Lord. And I couldn't shake it. So uh, to Louisiana I went. And actually the Lord used me to bring the message of the cross to my father because, like I said, he's preaching Christ and uh, the baptism of the Spirit, but he didn't know how sanctification worked and how to live free from sin. Uh, so the Lord used me to, to kind of add to what he was preaching, you know, give him the fullness of the, of the gospel. And uh, so he has a cross-preaching church now up in Massachusetts. Hallelujah. And, uh, bless him. So, uh, you know, it's, and there's not many like-minded believers up there. Let me tell you, it's, it's not many down here, but there's a lot more down here than there is up there. So he's, he's got to work ahead of him. But anyway, so that's my story. Now let's get into the Word now that you know a little bit about who's talking to you. Amen? Amen. Praise uh, God. Let's go to Galatians. Galatians chapter 5 tonight. Galatians chapter 5. And just give a little bit. Uh, of the background of Galatians. Um, I'm sure your Pastor Matt's dealt with it before, but it's always good to be reminded. Amen. Um, so the Epistle of Galatians, written by the Apostle Paul, um, he actually had founded this church in Galatia on probably his first missionary journey. And it was a, it was a new church at this time. He didn't spend a whole lot of time there when he founded the church. Um, and he moved on in his missionary journey, and after he left, some false teachers had crept in to this church that he planted on the message of the cross, and these false teachers were attempting to mix law and grace upon these new converts. They had crept into this new church, they were attempting to um, draw them, uh, bring, they take these disciples really and, and, and take them away from Paul, and, and they were claiming to know more than Paul knew, they were claiming to have a, a better message than Paul had. They were claiming to be from Jerusalem. They were claiming to uh, have original, have ties with the original 12 apostles um, that Jesus walked with. And so they, they tried to keep the law of Moses on these new believers. And so Paul hears about this and uh, he writes this epistle and strongly refutes that. You know, he says, a little leaven leavens a whole lump. You can't mix law and grace. Right. You can't Amen. mix law and grace. These, see, these false teachers were telling these believers that, yeah, you believe in Christ, that's good. 
But you need to do this and such also. You need to keep the law of Moses. You need to be circumcised. You need to keep the Sabbath. And they said, if you don't keep these things, then you're not truly saved. So they tried to add to the gospel of faith and grace. And we know that we're saved one way. And that's by faith and faith alone in the finished work of Christ. And that's the gospel that Paul founded this church on. And so when he hears about this and the false teaching that had crept in, and he hears that these believers were actually entertaining this false gospel, he's fired up. And this, uh, this epistle in Galatians uh, is, is heavy. He says that um, he wants these, these false teachers to actually be accursed, cut off from God. He says, if any, if any of one else, any angel or me come to you preaching another gospel, let them be accursed, cut off. There's only one gospel. And he would uh, reinforce the doctrines of justification by faith. We know that when we, when we come to Christ, we simply say yes to uh, who He is and what He did on Calvary's cross. We're born again. We're cleansed by His blood. Sins forgiven. Cast as far as the east is from the west. Glory be to God. Amen. It's a finished work in Christ. We're made whole. We're complete in Him by simple faith in His blood. And that's the gospel. And now that we're born again, we have the power of the Holy Spirit, which gives us everything we need to live free from the indwelling sin, Amen. from the from the evil of the flesh and the sin nature. The we have everything we need in Christ by sin Simple faith in Him and His finished work. That's the gospel that Paul preached. And these false teachers were coming in and saying, that's good, but you need to do this, this, and this also. And Paul said, if you go back to law, if you go back to law, then the uh, sins of the flesh will manifest. And that's what we see here in chapter 5. Um, the sins of the flesh will manifest. And he lists all those sins, you know, covetousness, jealousy, envy, malice, wrath, drunkenness. You know, sexual immorality. He lists, he goes through the whole list. I won't take the time to read it all, but I guarantee every one of us can go through that list. And we've struggled with at least one thing that he named in that Amen. list. Because that's who we are. That's our flesh. Everyone has a flesh. And Paul says strongly that if you go back to law, if you look to the law, then your flesh will manifest. You will fall under the dominion of sin and you will lose faith. You will lose faith. You will eventually be cut off. He even said this. He said, Christ has become of no effect unto you. Whosoever are of you are justified by the law. You have fallen from grace. He says, Christ does you no benefit. You can't profit from the finished work of Christ if you look to the law to produce Amen. righteousness in your life. You can't do it. We can't do it in our own strength. That's why Christ came. That's why Christ died. And then Paul would ask this question to them. He said, he who works miracles among you, did he do it by the keeping of the law or by the hearing of faith? Referring to the Holy Spirit. Did you get born again? Did you get saved? Did you get healed? Did you get uh, filled with the Spirit, with the evidence of speaking in tongues? Did you receive all these things because you were good enough to receive them? Did you receive all these things because you kept a certain list of commandments? No, of course not. You said, yes, Lord, I want that. And He freely gave it to you. Amen. Why? Because Christ paid for it. Amen. Glory be to God. And that's the only reason why. Christ paid for it. So Paul reinforces the fact that we're saved and sanctified by faith alone. Now that we're born again, we have the power of the Spirit to live this life. Amen. And law is, has nothing to do with our sanctification process. We're dead to the law. And this brings me to, uh, to our text tonight, uh, chapter 5, verse 16 and 17. Galatians 5, 16 and 17. And Paul says this, he says, This I say then, walk in the Spirit, and ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. For the flesh lusteth against the Spirit, and the Spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary to one to another, so that you cannot do the things that you would. Now I want to uh, title this message tonight, Walk in the Spirit. Walk in the Spirit. Uh, let's pray. Father, we thank you for this time, Lord God. I'm thankful for this opportunity, Father. And we ask for your anointing to come right now, Lord God. We can do nothing without the power of your Holy Spirit, my Lord and my God. We ask you would flood this place with your presence, my Lord. That your Son would be glorified, Lord God. Touch my lips and my heart tonight, Lord God. That I might speak forth your word and only your word, my Lord. Touch the hearts, Lord God, of those who hear, Lord. And open them up, Lord. That they might receive your truth, Lord. That we might grow in the grace and the knowledge that is found in Christ alone. And we'll give you all the praise and all the glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Now there's three, three points I want to emphasize tonight. Um, talking about walking in the Spirit. It's the Spirit, 
the flesh, and the cross. The spirit, the flesh, and the cross. Paul deals with all three of these things in great detail throughout the book of Galatians. And uh, we'll just touch on them tonight. And I'll start with the spirit. He talks about the spirit. He says, this I say then. He says, walk in the spirit. Now, most Christians don't know really what that means. Uh, if we're born again, we want to do that. We, we should crave the presence of God. We should want to walk in His power, in the Spirit. But um, a lot of us just don't know how to do it. And Paul says, walk in the Spirit. Uh, that word walk, it just simply means to regulate your life. To, to conduct your behavior. Conduct your behavior according to the power of the Spirit. Walk in the Spirit. Now we know the Holy Spirit is a person. Jesus said this in uh, the Gospel of John. He said, I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter, that he may abide with you forever. He may abide with you forever. I want you to know that you have help tonight. You have a comforter. If your faith is in Christ and you've been born again, you have everything you need to live a victorious life in Christ Jesus. The flesh cannot dominate you tonight if your faith is in Christ and Him crucified. He has prayed the Father for you, and He has sent the Comforter, the Helper, the Power from on high. He's the Spirit of Truth. He provides everything the Christian has need of. The Holy Spirit is the one who takes Christ and Him crucified, and He manifests that victory in your heart and your life. Christ ascended to the Father after He rose from the dead, and He received the promise of the Father, the person in the power of the Holy Spirit. And he told his disciples, don't leave Jerusalem until you receive the power from on high. Don't go preach. Don't go and testify of me. Don't move a muscle until you receive what I'm going to give you. Because we can do nothing without the power of the Holy Spirit. That's what Christ paid for. When he died on Calvary's cross, he made the way for us to be adopted. We have the spirit of adoption in us which cries out, Abba, Father. We know that God is our Father. We have the power of the Spirit. We need to know what we have access to in the person and the power of the Holy Spirit. If we'll walk in the Spirit, if we'll depend upon the Spirit, yes, then no enemy, no evil desire of our flesh can take us away from the love of Christ. If we will walk in the power of God's Spirit, yes. then no seducing devil, no doctrine of demons can yes. bring us away from Christ and Him crucified. Because the power of the Spirit gives us discernment. He speaks to us. He leads us. He guides us. He equips us with, with everything that we need to live this life. Amen. We have everything we need in Christ. He gives us a never-ending supply of the Holy Spirit. If you need something tonight, then His Spirit is able to meet that need. Everything you have need of is found in Christ. And He will send the promise of the Father, the power from on high. He already paid the price. He already bought your blood. He already bought your life. And now He has the power of the Spirit in His possession. He said, I will pray the Father. I will pray the Father. And He will send you another comforter. That means one in the likeness of himself, another of the same kind, That's good. Of, of the same kind. He is, he is divinity. The Holy Spirit is God, and he's a person. He lives with us. He's in us. Amen. He's in us. Jesus said this to his disciples. He said, he has been with you, but now he will be in you. Amen. See, after the cross, when the sin debt was paid, when the sin debt was paid, now the Holy Spirit has the legal right to dwell within us. Hallelujah. Even though we're not perfect yet, even though we still have this flesh and this wicked heart, the Holy Spirit can dwell within us. We are temples yes. of the living yes. God. Yes. We are temples Jesus. of the living God. Yes. God lives within us. Why? Because the blood of Jesus has cleansed us from all yes. our sins. Now He can abide in us forever. And He can do in us both to will and to do. He can work in us for His, for his good pleasure. He can accomplish His will in our life. We just have to allow Him to. We have to walk in the Spirit. We have to yield to Him. We have to surrender our lives to Christ and Him crucified. That the power of the Spirit. My Lord, we need to know what we have in Christ. We need to know that we have everything we have need of. The power of His Spirit is able to deliver you from any bondage. It doesn't matter what you struggle with. It doesn't matter how difficult that sin looks like. It doesn't matter how far that child has gone into sin or that loved one. The power of the Holy Spirit is able to reach down into the depth of any evil 
situation, any hell-bent person can be saved by the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. If we'll just pray, if we'll just ask Christ to send him. He said he had already paid for him. He bought it. He bought everything you have need of at Calvary's cross. And now the power of the Holy Spirit is able and willing to complete the work in you. We already have it. He lives within us. It's the spirit of life in Christ Jesus that has set us free from the law of sin and death. So not only do we have the power of the spirit and he is a person. He has a specific purpose. The Holy Spirit has a purpose. Jesus sent him for a reason. Jesus sent him for a reason. And it's not to give us everything we want or just do for us whatever we tell him to do. That's not what the Holy Spirit's for. We can't force the Holy Spirit to move. We can't shout him down or do anything to manifest his presence. He does what he wants. He's God. He's going to accomplish his will. Christ sent him to accomplish his will. And this is why he came. This is what Christ said. He said, when the comforter is come, whom I will send unto you from the Father, even the spirit of truth, which proceeds from the Father, he shall testify of me. He shall testify of me. That's the purpose of the Holy Spirit, <coughs> to glorify Christ. It's to testify of who Christ is and what, what Christ has done. That's why when we preach the cross, when we believe the cross, the Holy Spirit does his job. Glory to God. It's a, it's a, it's a spiritual law. If we'll keep our faith in Christ, then the Holy Spirit will glorify Him through us. He'll defeat all of our sin. He'll defeat every evil desire. He'll defeat every evil thought. He'll bring every thought into captivity. He'll cast down every stronghold. Glory be to God. The power of the Spirit is well able to complete the good work that Christ began in you. Glory be to God. The power of the Holy Spirit glorifies Christ and He does it through you. Hallelujah. That's the purpose of the Holy Spirit. To conform you into the image of Christ. Amen. That's why Christ sent Him. To defeat your flesh. To defeat your sin nature. In the power of His Spirit. There's only one way that we can allow that to happen. And that's simply to keep our faith where it was when we got born again. We came to Christ with nothing. We had nothing to give but our faith. And faith alone. And that's the only thing we need to walk in salvation victory. Hallelujah. To walk in salvation power. To walk free from the sin nature and the evil desires of our flesh. Because He has given us the person and the power of the Holy Spirit. He's always with us. He's always with us. He will never leave us nor forsake us. Glory be to God. We don't have to be lonely. We don't have to be depressed. We don't have to be cast down and downtrodden. We don't have to be beat up by the devil. We have the person and the power of the Holy Spirit at our disposal. We can fellowship with Him day and night. Glory to God. We can commune with Him. We can talk with Him all hours of the day. He never sleeps. He never gets tired. He is God. Glory be to God. He's always there for you. He's always always willing to meet your need. He's always willing to give you the power that you need to glorify Christ. See, if your desires line up with His desires, then you will ask what you have need of, and He will give it. Why? Because you ask according to His will. That's why when we line up with the will of God, with our faith in His blood, we'll ask, Lord, I need this, and He'll send the power of His Spirit to meet that need, because He knows that you love Him, and that you're walking according to His commandments. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. See, first He changes us. He gives us His desires. And then when we walk in the Spirit, we ask God to provide what He already wants to provide. And then His Spirit gives it to us because we're His children. Glory be to God. He paid for it. He paid for it. His blood bought it. Glory be to God. And there's no devil in hell that can stop the power of the Holy Spirit. There's no man. Your flesh cannot stop the power of God's Spirit. Glory be to God. It's the most powerful spiritual law known to man. The law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has set me free from the law of sin and death. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. So it doesn't matter what that evil desire is. Glory to God. If I feel some of those evil desires that used to control my life rise up within me, I know where my help comes from. Glory be to God. He set me free from heroin and cocaine. There is nothing that can take me down, not because I'm strong in and of myself, but because I have a Savior who has defeated death and hell, and nothing can take me away from His salvation plan. Nothing can move me away from His love. His blood has bought me with a price. Now I am the temple of the living God. Glory. 
Glory be to God. Nothing can take you away from the salvation plan of Christ. Nothing can move you away from his love and his glory. Do you know what you have in Christ? Keep your faith in his blood and the power of the Holy Spirit will come from heaven and fill your soul in a way that your natural mind cannot now comprehend. Get ready. His power is about to come into this church in a way that you've never seen before. Why? Because you have a pastor that preaches Christ crucified. And if your faith will stay in the message that is proclaimed from behind this pulpit, then you will see the power of God move in the way that we read about in the book of Acts. The book of Acts is not over. Glory be to God. The power of the Spirit still heals. The power of the Spirit still saves. The power of the Spirit still gives the gifts of the Spirit. Healing, miracles, signs and wonders. The power of the Spirit. Hallelujah. His blood is paid for it. Don't let his death be in vain. Appropriate that death by faith and watch resurrection power fill your heart and your life. Glory be to God. God raised his son from the dead by the power of the Spirit. And that same Spirit that raised Christ from the dead dwells within you. There is no devil. There is no evil desire. There is no temptation that can take you away from Christ crucified. If you'll stand strong in the liberty of the gospel, if you repent from your own strength and walk in the Spirit, then the lust of the flesh will not take you down. Hallelujah. Do not be afraid of your flesh. Do not be afraid of your weakness, for in your weakness, his strength is made perfect. Glory be to God. He is about to manifest his glory in this place. Get ready. Get on board. Put your faith in the blood and watch his power complete that good work in you. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory. Rest in Christ. Rest in Christ. It's a finished work. Hallelujah. His spirit is the power source. We don't have to do it in and of ourselves. His spirit is the power source. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. I'm so glad I don't have to do it in my own strength. Hallelujah. Glory to God. We have the power of the Spirit. Yes. Glory to God. The power of the Holy Spirit. The same Spirit that raised Christ from the dead dwells within you. Amen. Do you know what you have? Hallelujah. Do you know what you have today? Glory to God. And we walk around all depressed and beat up. You know, why me? This and that. You know, dragging our heads, not understanding, you know, I'm going through this and that. Do we know what we have? Glory to God. Do we know the power that is within us? Hallelujah. If we just tap into God's will, if we just pray, thy kingdom come and thy will be done, then his spirit will do that for which he sent it to do. It will glorify Christ. Hallelujah. Yeah. Glory be to God. He will quicken your mortal body. Physical yeah. healing, spiritual healing, emotional, mental healing. His spirit is well able to do everything you have need of in Christ Jesus. If it glorifies Christ, his spirit will do it. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Ask God for what you have need of. If it glorifies Christ, he will do it. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. It doesn't matter what you ask for. If it glorifies Christ, he will do it. He will hold no good thing back from his child. Glory to God. Keep asking. Keep seeking. He will do it. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Now, Paul says that the flesh. Now, this is where it gets sticky. The flesh lusteth against the spirit lusteth against the spirit he says the spirit against the flesh literally against it means to be at war with to be at war with see that's why we don't see uh, the, the glory of God manifest in our lives like we want to is because our flesh gets in the way me myself and I the flesh it's self it's willpower it's my ability which has all been tainted by sin. That's what the flesh is. It's me. What I want apart from God. What I want with my life. What I want to do. How I want to do it. Where I want to go. Nothing to do with God. It's what I want. And that flesh fights against the spirit. Fights against the spirit. Remember when I first was called to preach. You know, I, I hated standing in front of people. You know, I did not want to do it at all. No desire in me except for the desire that God put there. But I can remember the flesh fighting it. Telling my dad, no way, I'm not preaching. No way. 
I'm all set with that. I want nothing to do with that. Then the, the spirit would keep working on me, keep working on me, because that flesh and the spirit was warm, warm. And eventually I gave in, and I thank God for it. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. I thank God for it because everything God wants to do in us and through us and for us is for our good Amen. and his glory. Yeah. But that Amen. evil flesh is deceiving. Amen. We always think we know what's best. We always just take control, and it blinds us at times. We, we're just doing our own thing, not even realizing that we're missing God completely. We're just in our own world. I'm talking about born-again Christians. Amen. We're born again. We're saved, but we're just doing our own thing. God's just kind of on the back burner. You know, we, we come talk to Him on Sunday morning, Wednesday night. You know, but He's really not leading us. He's really not Amen. guiding us. You know, the flesh is warring. The flesh is warring. It says, the, the flesh lusteth against the spirit. That word lust. It means a desire, or a longing, or a craving. You know, the lust of the flesh. You know, it's for something forbidden, something sinful. You know, it's a craving within. It's something that you, you can feel it in your heart at times when it rises up, that anger, that jealousy, you know, that immorality. You know, whatever it is, you can, you can feel it rising up. But he says this, he says, Walk in the Spirit, and you shall not fulfill, fulfill the lust of the flesh. He said, you will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. And that word fulfill, it means to perform or to complete, to complete something. So that the act being done corresponds to the command that was given. So in other words, there's a command given, and I fulfill that command. I act on that command. I complete it. He said, you will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. So in other words, the flesh gives demands. The flesh demands something from you. We have evil desires in our heart, and the flesh demands that we feed these evil desires. It demands that. It gives, it gives the will commandments in our heart. We need this. We need that. And until we fulfill that evil desire, then we're not satisfied. Until we have enough money, until we have that job, until we have that woman, that man, until we have whatever it is, that next drink, that drug, these evil fleshly desires, their longings, their cravings, and they'll be fulfilled if we're not walking in the Spirit. We'll act on these desires. There's only one way to put these desires to death and to eliminate these desires, and that's to walk in the Spirit. Amen? That's to walk in the Spirit. Paul said, these are contrary one to another. Meaning that the spirit and the flesh, like I said, they're complete opposites. And this is the war that goes on in the heart of every Christian after we're born again. This is the battle. You know, we still have a flesh. We still have evil desires that haven't been changed by God yet. Amen? We're not all perfect after we get born again, right? Fine. Am I talking to you, know, you guys with me? <laughs> well, I'm not anyways. You know, four years of Bible college and I feel like I don't know anything sometimes. I'm just like, Lord, what am I even doing, you know? This flesh, you know, it's doubt, it's fear, you know, ah, anxiety, all that. It's flesh, it's unbelief. It's warring against the spirit. And uh, Christ paid for our victory. So we don't have to be dominated by those lusts of the flesh, amen? amen. Glory be to God. We can walk in the spirit. This is the battle that Paul was talking about in Romans chapter 7 when he said this. When he said, for I know that in me... That is, in my flesh dwelleth no good thing. For to will is present with me. But how to perform that which is good, I find not. So he's saying, in my flesh there's no good thing. There's nothing good in me. When I come to Christ, there's nothing in me that he can work with. Amen. Oh my Lord. That's, Amen. Something, that, that's something we don't want to admit. Even if we say it with our mouth, yeah, that's right. In our heart, we're like, oh, I'm smart. I can do this. I can do that. God can't use any of it. Everything dies when we say yes to Christ. Crucified with Him. The old man, R.I.P. I like that. That's good. The old man, R.I.P. He's resting in peace. Everything you were before Christ is dead. Amen. All those talents and all those abilities. I'm not saying, uh, you know, if you could sing before, then you're not going to sing for God afterwards. That's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is your desires and what you wanted to do with who you were and your talents and your abilities. Everything you wanted has to die. And then he'll resurrect 
all the good things in the power of the Spirit Amen. for His glory. Hallelujah. And He'll use all those things for His glory. But everything you wanted, all your dreams, all your desires, all your talents, all your gifts, everything had to die in Christ Jesus for God to be glorified. Amen. All of it had to die. No, we can bring nothing to Christ. And God says, oh, He's good in and of Himself. Paul the Apostle, the one who was used to bring forth the new covenant, greatest man of God who ever lived, said there is nothing good in my flesh. There's nothing good in his flesh. There's nothing good in mine. That goes for all of us. There is no good thing in our flesh. That's why we need to walk Amen. in the Spirit. Hallelujah. Amen. According to the Word of God, yield to the Spirit. Depend upon the Spirit. The Spirit of God, He's the voice of truth. He wants to lead His children and guide His children into all truth. Hallelujah. Glory to God. He wants to lead you in every step of your life. He wants to give you complete victory. But we have to yield to Him, walk in Him, depend upon Him. We have to give up on the flesh. And that's something that doesn't happen easy and it doesn't happen overnight. Because there's something in us, in our flesh, that wants to do it in and of ourselves. We want to accomplish this thing. Even after we're born again, we want to have victory according to the law. Why? So we can boast in it. That's why false doctrine is so deceiving because it appeals to the flesh. Mm. You think these believers walked away from Paul's gospel just because, uh, you know, they just hated Paul and they just decided randomly? No, of course not. There was something that appeased to their flesh. It appealed to them. Amen. It appealed to their evil desires in their heart that hadn't changed yet. And they, and they gravitated towards that. Right. They gravitated towards that. All false doctrine will appeal to your flesh, the prosperity gospel. You'll get rich if you have Amen. enough faith. It appeals to the flesh. Amen. You say, oh, I want that. So I'm going to give to God, not because I love Him, but because I want to get rich. Amen. See, it appeals to the flesh. Those fleshly desires have to go. Those fleshly desires have to go. There's nothing in my flesh that God can use. And if we walk in the Spirit, those desires will not be fulfilled. See, we'll always have flesh until we receive a glorified body, until we go to be with the Lord. There'll always be things in us that need to be changed. Amen? Amen. We'll never reach a point where we can say, I've got it. Yeah. I'm good now. Amen. There's always flesh. But the Word of God says that we will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. So, in other words, God, let me use this as an example. God gave me a, a commandment, right, to go to Bible college. I'll be done in May. I've, I'm going to graduate. I have fulfilled that commandment. I've fulfilled it. I've done what he's told me to do. Go there, get your degree. And I, of course, he's going to leave me. And i got other stuff going on. But that, that specific commandment, I've fulfilled it. I've brought it to completion. There was a desire in, of the Spirit birthed in my heart to go to Bible college. And it came to fulfillment. It was fulfilled. And I will complete it in May. Now, the same thing goes for the evil flesh. A desire will birth in our heart, will birth in our heart. And if we don't deal with it according to the Spirit, by faith and grace in Christ, then what's going to happen? We're going to fulfill it. We might battle with it for a while, might think about it for a while, we might fight it, might go to AA, might try all this other junk to try to beat it, but eventually it's going to be fulfilled. Eventually we're going to act on it. Eventually the lust of the flesh will manifest unless we keep our faith in the finished work of Christ. Amen. It's the only answer for the flesh. We can hide it, we can bury it, we can do all these things, we can lie about it, but we will fulfill the lust of the flesh. We will act on our evil desires in one way or another if we don't submit to God's only way of victory. Amen. That's what the scripture says. There's one way of victory, there's one spirit, there's one faith, there's one Lord. And if we don't submit to God's one way of victory, the lust of the flesh will manifest. That's good. The lust of the flesh will manifest, always. And if we hide it and lie about it and pretend that it's not, then it's just self-righteousness and pride, and that's the lust of the flesh too. It will always manifest in some way or another. No matter what, it will always manifest unless we submit to faith and grace. It's the only answer for the lust of the flesh. Because faith and grace says, I can't do it, Christ already did it. Therefore, everything in me is dead. That way, Christ gets all the glory. Amen. He does it in me and through me. Christ does it all. He said, it is finished. Glory be to God. It's God's perfect <coughs> message, the message of the cross. It defeats every enemy of God. Every enemy is defeated through the cross of Christ. Hallelujah. Amen. He crucified your flesh and the affections thereof. He crucified the world unto you and you unto the world. He triumphed over principalities and powers. 
He defeated death and hell. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Jesus defeated every enemy at the cross. And that is our answer for the lust of the flesh. Glory be to God. Look over uh, real quick. To, I want you to look at this. Stay in chapter 5. And look at 24 and 25. Verses 24 and 25. And this is, this is Paul's answer for the lust of the flesh. He says, And they that are Christ have crucified the flesh with the affections and lusts. There it is right there. And they, it's that simple. It's that simple. And they that are Christ have crucified the flesh with the affections and the lusts. Glory to God. If we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. So that's what he's saying. That's the answer. It's that simple. The war that goes on in our heart, the battle of the flesh and the Spirit, the answer is Calvary's cross. The answer is Christ and Him crucified. If we've been born again, then the flesh and the evil affections thereof have been crucified, have been put to death. The power of every evil desire has been broken in Christ. Glory be to God. It doesn't mean you won't feel it sometimes. It doesn't mean you won't fight it sometimes because the flesh and the spirit are at war. There's a war going on in our heart and the flesh is playing for keeps. Uh, James said it like this. He said, when lust has conceived, it brings forth sin. And sin, when it is finished, brings forth death. That means when lust has taken control, when it has conceived, when it has given birth, it brings forth sin. When that desire is fulfilled, sin is the result. The result of sin is death. If the flesh is not dealt with by Calvary's cross, then it will bring forth sin and death. Separation from God. That's why Paul was so emphatic about the gospel that he preached. That's why he said, if you go back to law, you will be accursed. You will die if you go back to law. Because the lust of the flesh can't be dealt with with a list of rules and regulations. The lust of the flesh can only be dealt with by death. Crucifixion in Christ. We have to die. We're sinners, and the answer for our sin is the grave. And if we'll die in Christ Jesus, we won't stay in the grave. He'll raise us from the dead with resurrection power, and we'll walk in the Spirit. That's the answer for our sin. That's the answer for our flesh. Crucify in Christ. It is yet not I that liveth, but Christ who lives in me and through me for the glory of the Father. Hallelujah. What's your problem tonight? What, what are you battling? What is that evil desire? Take it to the cross and then watch God go to work. Rest in Christ Jesus and watch him crucify that evil desire. Watch him crucify your flesh and conform you into his image. From glory to glory, even by the Spirit of the Lord, the Holy Spirit, the power source given by Christ Jesus. Glory be to God. He's crucified that flesh. It's dead. It's dead. Glory be to God. Your flesh is dead tonight. Hallelujah. You're going to feel that wrestling match. It's going to be a war at times, but you need to know and stand firm that the battle has already been won. Christ said it is finished. Hallelujah. Your flesh cannot take you down. Hallelujah. You will not fulfill the lust of the flesh if you walk in the spirit. Every step you depend upon his spirit. Every step you depend upon his power. When you feel too weak to take another step, you need to know that it's not your strength that's going to carry you. It's his strength because he's a good father and he loves you. He will never leave you nor forsake you. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. He sent his son to die for you. He will not leave you in a state of failure. He wants to give you complete victory. Sin will not have dominion over you. You are not under law. You are under grace. The goodness of God given to people who don't deserve it. Why? Because Christ paid for it. He died for it. The affections of the lust have been crucified in Christ. You have resurrection power resting upon you. Hallelujah. You have everything you have need of. Glory to God. You have everything you have need of in Christ Jesus. Crucified in Christ. Hallelujah. It is nevertheless not I who live, but Christ who liveth through me. 
Glory to God. Glory to God. You have the resurrected Son of God and His power and His glory available to you. Hallelujah. All we need to do is tap into it. Keep our faith in that blood. Keep our faith in the cross of Christ. And He will work it out. Hallelujah. He will defeat every enemy. He will crucify your flesh. He will take every evil thought into captivity. Hallelujah. There is no flesh. There is no sin. There is no devil that can stand against the resurrection power of Almighty God. The cross of Christ is your victory. Hallelujah. Stand in that cross. There's going to be a battle. There's going to be times of testing. Your faith will be tested. You will stumble. You will fall. But when you fall and when you stumble, don't move your faith. Hold fast to the cross of Christ. Resurrection power is coming. It took three days for death to take its place in the Son of God. But he didn't stay in the tomb. God spoke one word and resurrection power came from heaven and filled that dead body of his son. He walked out of that tomb with resurrection, power, and glory. And now all victory is in the right hand of God, even his son. Hallelujah. All power, all dominion, and all glory is given to the son of God. If we'll just say yes to his salvation plan, if we'll just rest in his finished work, then every enemy in your heart and life will be defeated. And not only that, you'll begin to intercede for your family and your friends and you'll see strongholds in their life broken down by the power of God because his victory is not just for you it's for your family it's for your church it's for everyone you come in contact with glory be to God because the son of God is contagious hallelujah as that faith is contagious when somebody grabs a hold of the covenant and starts walking in victory starts preaching Christ crucified other people start grabbing on and saying I want that victory because you know it's real. You can see it. It's real. I said it's real. I said it's real. It's the only power that can set you free from sexual immorality and drug addiction and drunkenness. There's no other power. AA can't do it. No 12-step program. Glory to God. Fasting can't do it. Prayer can't do it. As good as those things are in their rightful place, nothing you can do in and of yourself is able to set you free. That's why Christ came, so you can rest in his finished work. Glory be to God. Rest in that work. Rest in that work. Hallelujah. It's a finished work. It's a finished work. Glory to God. Glory to God. He has equipped us with everything we need. Everything we need to accomplish God's will. We have it at our disposal. We have it at our disposal. But I'm just, I know for myself, I, just, I don't tap into it like I need to. You know, I, try, I always try to do it on my own. I just go ahead and try to do it on my own. And then once I fail a thousand times, then I finally go to the Lord and ask Him to deal with it. Amen. You know, that's just how we are sometimes. You know, we want to do it on our own. You know, and... It just can't be done. But God's purpose for giving us the Holy Spirit, we know, is to glorify Christ. But he also wants to give us rest. He doesn't want us to do it in our own strength. That's, we get tired and bogged down. There's such peace and joy in the Holy Spirit. Amen. That's why Paul said that the fruit of the Spirit, love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. He said against this there is no law. Hallelujah. That means there's no end. There's no hindering. Uh, there's no hindrance to the fruit of the Spirit. It just keeps growing. Hallelujah. Glory to God. There's never a graduating class in the fruit of the Spirit. It doesn't, you just keep getting bigger in the Spirit. Your fruit just keeps growing. Hallelujah. And then He'll purge you again. He'll go, you'll go through a little trial, a little testing, so that He might birth more fruit in you. Hallelujah. Because every trial, every test of your faith teaches you to keep your faith in the blood of His Son. Yes. That, the, that you might receive more of His power and more of His Spirit. He brings us to an end of ourself constantly, bringing, up, bringing our flesh to an end of itself, putting us in, in situations to where there's no way out, that we might trust Him. Yes. Sometimes that's the only way we'll trust Him is when we're in a situation Amen. to where we have no choice. <laughs> Amen. You know what I mean? I mean, I know that's how I was when I got saved. I was so miserable and beat up by sin. I was just, I, I was just ready. You know, sometimes, you know, we don't, we don't come to God easily most of the time. We have to...
fail and fall on our face and come to an end of our own strength. And then he says, finally, now I can show you my strength. Amen. Now I can show you my deliverance. Yes. Now I can show you my power. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. That's what he wants. That's why he's bringing us to an end of ourself. That's why the testing and the trials of our faith. Because he wants to show us his glory Hallelujah. and his power and his strength. Yes. He wants to be our mighty tower and our strong refuge. Yes. Glory Hallelujah. be to God. He wants to show up in the midst of that storm and speak peace to your heart. Glory be to God. He wants to show you his power. He wants you to walk in the spirit. He sent his only son to die for us. Hallelujah. Yes. Glory to God. Thank he bankrupted all of heaven. He sent his beloved son. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And how often do we neglect what we have in Christ? Yes. Because we just want to do our own thing. The flesh wars against the spirit. But if we walk in the spirit. Hallelujah. We will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Hallelujah. And God will be glorified. Hallelujah. Yes, hallelujah. You'll begin to walk in his power and his glory in a way that you've never known before. Glory be to God. You'll begin to pray sometimes. Two, three hours will go by. And you'll just be walking in God's glory in his presence. Because you're not trusting in your own strength. Amen. You're not trusting in your own flesh. Hallelujah. You didn't fast it up. You didn't pray it up. You just said, Lord, I'm dead in Christ. I believe in your blood. And then the power of his presence will come. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. His delivering power will show up. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. I know many Christians are dry. Their prayer life is dead. You know, they go, they kneel down for five minutes at the end of the night, and then that's their prayer life. And then it's sad, you know, and I've been there. It's sad. It's a horrible place to be. You know, you feel like you don't even know the God that you serve. That's the flesh warring against the spirit. If we'll die in Christ Jesus, we will walk in resurrection power, in communion in the spirit. We'll depend upon His Spirit. He'll lead us in every step of our life. Hallelujah. Every decision. Glory to God. Glory to God for our good and His glory. Hallelujah. He has a plan for our life. Glory be to God. He has a plan for your life tonight. He wants to show you great and mighty things. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. That's why the Spirit came to teach you. He's the teacher. He wants to teach you what you have in Christ. He wants to show you His glory. The riches of glory in Christ Jesus. You're blessed with all spiritual blessings in Christ in heavenly places. Hallelujah. It doesn't matter what the circumstances in this earth look like. If you get a hold of God's salvation plan, if you begin to walk in the spirit, then the circumstances won't matter. Glory be to God. You begin to walk in peace and joy and victory in a way that you've never known before. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I know this last year of my life, I've been in some, some trials, uh, some very difficult trials. I won't take the time to get into the details, but, um, you know, just bringing my flesh to an end. That's what he was doing. Bringing my flesh to an end. And it's a painful process. Amen. When we truly say, Lord, crucify my flesh, get ready. Get ready because it, he will. <laughs> he yeah. will do it. And, it. and it hurts. It's not a fun process. Right. He puts you in, in positions and conditions to where uh, your flesh has to be crucified. Amen. You know, he'll, he'll bring you to an end of yourself. He'll answer that prayer. And uh, this past year, I was just in some tough situations and uh, struggling with stuff. And man, I'm just on my face a lot saying, Lord, why this, why that? But, you know, the more I grow in the Lord, I've noticed that my situations haven't changed. A year ago, I'm, I'm still in the same trials I was a year ago. The things I'm believing for, the things I'm waiting for, I haven't seen any of it yet. Nothing promises that I have that I really want from God, I haven't seen any of it. None of it. But my internal walk with God is completely different than it was a year ago. I'm no longer bogged down and depressed most of the time by what I see in the natural, by what's going on around me. But I'm walking in peace and joy in the Holy Ghost. Walking in the Spirit. Glory be to God. Not when, when you're truly walking in the Spirit, things can be falling all apart around you. And it's just like, whatever. <laughs> you know, it's just like, whatever. You know, I know who I am in Christ. I know what I have in the heavenlies. I'm not going to be on this earth much longer anyway. This life goes by like this. I know what I have in the heavenlies. Glory to God. Glory to God. And things around you, glory to God. They won't affect you on the inside. You know, the world is like this. You got money. You got 
you know, whatever, girlfriend, boyfriend, you know, all this stuff, you're up, then you don't have it, you're down, you're up, you're down, all depending on the lust of the flesh. Yeah. If your flesh is being fed, then you're happy. If your flesh isn't being fed, then you're not happy. Mm -hmm. And that's where the trial comes in. When God doesn't meet the needs of your flesh, He crucifies the needs of your flesh. <clears throat> oh my Lord, it hurts. But then He's going to raise you up in resurrection power Amen. with new desires and a new life in Christ. Good. Hallelujah. And the needs of your flesh will no longer matter because they'll be dead. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You'll have a new life in Christ. Yes. Glory be to God.